William Lovett was the leader of the Moral Force Chartists. They believed the way to get the government agree to the charter was to show that Chartists were worthy of the vote. They held meetings, wrote letters to persuade the government, set up schools to help people learn to read and write, encouraged Chartists not to drink in order to show that they were worthy of the vote. Physical Force Fergus O'Connor on the other hand was prepared to use force to get the government to introduce the six points of the charter. He was leader of the physical force chartists. He held large meetings, made passionate speeches urging chartists to fight for their right. A lot of the language he used in his speeches was violent. May 1839 1.2 million signed petition supporting the charter. Meetings held up and down the country. July 1839 Chartist riot in Birmingham Police and soldiers clash with crowd 6,000 troops sent to the north 1839 Chartist petition rejected House of Commons rejects petition by 235 votes to 46 Member of Parliament says, we cannot ever give the vote to the lower classes 1839 Rebellion in Newport 7,000 miners and iron workers march on Newport Soldiers kill 20 Leaders to be transported 1842 Second Chartist Petition rejected 3 million people sign new Chartist Petition Petition rejected again 287 votes to 49 1842 Strikes and more strikes 50,000 on strike in Lancashire. Chartists say no work until we have the charter. 1842. Mills back at work. Strikers arrested by troops. Prisons for those who will not go back to work. 1848. Fears of revolution. Third Chartist petition to go to Parliament, 5.7 million signatures. Commons rejects petition by 222 votes to 17. 1848. The government was worried stiff. There had already been revolutions that year in Paris, Baden, Vienna, Berlin, Dresden, Budapest, Warsaw, Milan, Venice, Bologna. Would London be next? Would the mass of people on Kennington Common storm Parliament and seize power? The commander-in-chief of the British Army, the 79-year-old Duke of Wellington feared the worst. Why? He sent Queen Victoria for safety to her palace on the Isle of Wight. He banned the Chartist procession from going into the centre of London, which they had no intention of doing. Cannon were placed on London's bridges in case the Chartists tried to attack Parliament. Key buildings the Bank of England the Post Office and the Guildhall were barricaded. 85,000 special constables were appointed. And just in case there were 4,000 police and 8,000 soldiers standing by. In fact, the Great Chartist demonstration was a peaceful affair. Thousands of people gathered to hear speeches. The event ended in pouring rain. A huge petition was carried to Parliament in a series of horse-drawn coaches then everybody went home. Parliament overwhelmingly rejected the petition. On April 10, 1848, thousands of Chartists met on Kennington Common, London. Consequences Peterloo 1819 The speakers at Peterloo were put in prison. Eleven people were killed. Many more wounded. The government banned meetings of more than 50 people. The government was frightened that if they gave this in this would only encourage more violence. The reform riots of 1831. The destruction of buildings in Bristol and Nottingham. Ring leaders were executed or transported to Australia. Middle class men were given the vote. Working people felt betrayed and were more determined to win the vote. The Chartist movement in the 1830s and 1840s. Chartist groups were set up all over the country, and many working class people became interested in politics. 
Chartist miners tried to take control of Newport but failed and many were killed. Millions of people signed the Chartist petition. Chartist strikers were jailed and leaders transported. Again, the government was frightened that if they gave in, this would only encourage more violence.